This is Marlin 1.1.9. The newest .9 version of Marlin has been out for a little while now, and it will be the last 8-bit only version of the firmware. In .9, they offer a few new features, and they've improved a lot of things. Now, last year we did a walkthrough of the .8 version of Marlin, where I show you how to upgrade from an older version of the firmware and how to set it up from scratch. And not a lot is going to be different in .9. It's going to be set up exactly the same. So if you need a more in-depth walkthrough, go check out that video. In this video, I'm going to be focused mainly on the new features that are available in .9, and we'll stop along the way and check out how a few of them work. So as always, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the code and have a look around. So for this video, I wanted to make absolutely sure that we had the newest version of Marlin available. So I'm going to head out and grab a fresh copy for us to walk through. And just for your reference, this video was made on October 15th, 2018. So let's head to Downloads. We'll extract all. We'll head into the Marlin folder. And we'll scroll down. We'll open up the Marlin INO file. Now you do have to have the Arduino IDE software to be able to do this, but it's free. You can go grab it from the download. Link in the description for all this info. So as usual with Marlin, there's really only two tabs that you're going to want to look at, unless you have some sort of hardware configuration change that you need to make. And that's configuration.h and configuration underscore adv.h. So let's just start in configuration.h and we'll scroll on through and see what's changed. And the first thing we come to that I kind of found interesting is not only can you enable a custom boot screen, you can now have a custom status screen image, which is kind of neat. I like the features that make the printers a little more personal. Scrolling on through, you see a lot of the multiplexer and multiple nozzle settings. This has been in Marlin for a little while now, but I just wanted to show you that they are trying to roll in a lot of the multiple extruder features that are starting to show up in the community. And then we come down to the new auto power control. So you can control your power supply with the PS on pin. Your board will have to be powered by either USB or another 5 volt source, and that's enough to get Marlin booted up and running. Then if this feature is enabled, you can send it G-code commands to turn that power supply on and off to get your high-powered features up and running. This feature is going to be really useful to help you conserve as much power as possible. I can't demonstrate this because I currently don't have a power supply on a printer that has this pin or this feature, but maybe at some time I can set one up to show you how it works. Continuing on, Here's something else that got added in dot nine that I find really interesting. You can set which stepper driver you use. When you enable these options, the firmware is then going to try to match the driver timing of your stepper driver, and it does actually make the whole thing quite a bit quieter. This thing is pretty impressive. It's gonna be hard for me to show you the differences in between this feature being off and this feature being on, but if you're setting up dot nine, definitely come in here and consider enabling all these options for each one of your motors. It's not going to hurt anything, and it's definitely worth a try. I also wanted to mention this in-stop noise filter feature. Now, when you're using a simple in-stop, sometimes it can get confused about how it's triggered, whether it's open or not. And traditionally, we'd try to use a pull-up or a pull-down resistor to try to level set that switch to keep this from happening. Marlin has introduced this feature to try to combat that. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I have done a little reading on it, and it doesn't look like it's working all that successfully. So give it a shot if you have these problems, but for me, I'm just going to leave it off and go with the in-stop switches. Scrolling on through, we have the regular movement settings. Nothing new here. But then we have S-curve acceleration. This is something that's brand new to dot nine, and there could be a whole video just on this. Basically what it's doing is it's trying to change the way your printer moves to eliminate vibration. It's supposed to allow you to make direction changes much smoother, and I do want to test this, but again, That'll be a separate video. Moving on through Z-Probe options. There have been a few things changed in Z-Probe options and bed leveling, but there's one that I really wanted to touch on, and that is Z-Clearance Multiple Probe. Now before, if you wanted to do a double bump or a triple bump while you were probing, you just had to use the same clearance height. Now if for some reason you'd like to change that clearance level in between the multiple probes, you can with this option. So now not only can you adjust the probe height when you're moving to different probing spots, you can adjust that height in between each probe. That can be pretty handy, and it can speed up your auto leveling process. While we're talking about Z probing, I wanted to mention that in dot nine, they've added a lot more safety features to it. So in the case of Z probing, it won't allow you to crash into the bed. So if you miss a probe point, it's not gonna just continue to drive it. It's gonna halt the machine, throw an error, and then you'll have to reset. 
and this can make your experience a lot nicer. I just wanted to mention that, now back to the code. They've also added some options for homing. Again, these are more safety features to keep you from crashing, and they're not really worth going through each one of them, but you might check them out if you're having an issue. Filament runout detection is pretty much the same. You can check my other video out for this. The bed leveling options are also pretty much the same as DOT8, but they have added more information to M503, and we're going to check that out in a minute. They've also added some manual bed leveling screens that you can display in your LCD, so you can move around to different points and manually level if you want to. Skew correction is almost identical to how it was in DOT 8. Your nozzle park feature is going to be the same. And in the LCD section, they've added quite a few more displays that are supported by Marlin, but they've also added these slim menus or no menus, and that saves a ton of memory if you have a board that doesn't have a lot on it. We'll check out the differences on these in just a moment. And the last thing I want to touch on in configuration.h, I just want to show you how many different panels are available now. There's so many more than when I first started with Marlin. Now we can move on to configuration underscore adv.h. Now there's a ton of good stuff in the advanced tab and we could spend all day talking about it, but I just wanted to hit a couple of the highlights. And the first one being junction deviation. Now this feature has actually been around a while, but not in Marlin. It was available in RipRap firmware. Basically, it's another way to determine a jerk value. If you're familiar with how jerk works, it's pretty similar to junction deviation. There are theories that one works better than the other. Basically, what this is going to allow you to do is adjust the acceleration based on the motion plan. So the smaller this number is, the slower it's going to move when it tries to make a direction change, like when it's going down a corner. Again, another subject that we could do an entire video on, I'm sure. Then right below that, we have adaptive step smoothing. This can be a tricky one to explain as well. What this is trying to achieve is it's trying to get a lot of the ghosting or the salmon skin that you see in your model by smoothing the step frequency out. So the best way I can tell you to try to use this is if you have a printer that requires TL smoothers to get a good finish on your print, remove those and enable this feature. It could possibly smooth the steps out well enough that you wouldn't need to use those all together. And probably the biggest feature that they added to DOT 9 is power loss recovery. This is the Creality 3D version. What this will do is write every movement or every line to the SD card so that you can recover if your printer gets shut off or you lose power. You also do have the option to monitor a board pin so that you can detect the power loss quicker. And of course we have the newest linear advanced setting, 1.5. It is much improved over 1.0, but there's a whole video about that already. Now the filament runout script hasn't changed a lot, but the advanced park feature has. It works pretty much the same way as it did before, and I show you how to do that in the M600 video, but they've added quite a few more options, such as the unload features. Now you can do an unload delay, or you can unload purge length. This will set the length of the unretract for the filament. So when you put your filament back in, you'll do a purge to make sure that your filament color has changed correctly, and everything's clean and ready to go. So if you're looking at filament swaps or runout sensors, you definitely want to come in here and check out the new features. Another important section is all the drivers that Marlin now supports. These are the smart class of driver, as I like to call them, mainly TMCs. Trinamic has a few different drivers that you can control with the software. So like a TMC2130 or a 2660, you can set voltage and microsteps on the fly inside Marlin. I go over some of these features in the TMC2130 video, but I do intend to make another 2130 video, and we'll go through a lot of these different ones that they've added. But the point here is the different models of stepper driver that they allow you to use now. So you have support for the 2600 series, you can use the 2130 as usual, and the 2200 series. And underneath that, we even have support for the L6470 Smart Arduino driver. So that's pretty much all the features that I wanted to go through just to touch on them real quick and show you what's changed. But now let's go through and check a few of them out. Now this version of Marlin is 1.1.9, but it's already configured for the log 3D printer. So all the movement and basic settings have already been changed. I have gone in and enabled all the stepper driver settings to use A4988, and I do believe it really has quieted the machine down a lot. Again, if you're upgrading Marlin, go ahead and make this change. It's not gonna hurt anything. So the first thing let's check out is the new menu options. So by default, this is kind of the menu setup that you're going to have. The prepare, the control, the print from SD. There's going to be quite a few things that you can do in prepare. Also in control, you can set up motion, change your E-steps, things like that. But now let's look at the slim option. 
So if you comment out no LCD menu, you're not going to have anything except a status screen. But let's uncomment slim LCD menus and see what it looks like. So after we uploaded the slim menu in prepare, you have a lot fewer options. And in control, you can still do a few things, but not near as many as you could before. So the slim menus are only going to be useful if you need to reduce your memory size. In the advanced pause feature section, there's one other handy feature they added that I wanted to show you. If you come down to the bottom, it's the filament load and unload G codes. So if you uncomment this, you can use the M701 and M702 commands to load and unload filament, which can kind of be handy. It will also put them in the LCD menu. If you have multiple extruders, you can enable the feature below it so it will unload all the extruders. So you can see I have this little tiny amount of filament left here in the printer. Now that I'm preheated, I can just unload it with an M702. M702. It moved the carriage up in Z 10 millimeters. It retracted the filament. It brought the filament out to extrude it a bit, and then it kicked the filament out of the extruder. And to load filament, you can do the M701. So do the M701. You can set your filament in the extruder. It's going to start a filament purge by spinning the extruder. That can be set in the firmware. On the LCD screen, you're going to have an option to continue or purge some more. We'll just go ahead and continue. And then it takes your hot end carriage back to home. I also wanted to show you what M503 looks like now. They've improved it a lot and it gives you a lot more information about what your printer is doing, including some auto bed leveling setup and filament load and unload links. I also wanted to show off the error checking and how it's improved. So I manually disabled my X in stop. So let's try to hit home. It crashes because there's no end stop, but then the printer halts and gives you an error. Before, it would have just continued to crash. Now let's check out power loss recovery. All you have to do to enable this is remove this comment. By default, it's going to write every layer to the SD card. So if you lose power, when you come back up, you're going to have to redo that whole layer. And most of the time, that's okay. You can change it to make it record every motion, but that's pretty hard on your SD card. So I'll show you this default state, and then you can decide later if you want to remember every movement. Now this is only going to work if you're printing from your SD card. But you're going along printing your Benchy, minding your own business, and then the power gets shut off. When the power comes back on, the menu is going to ask you if you'd like to stop or resume your print. If you hit resume, it's going to heat the bed and the extruder back up to temp. It's going to move X to home and Y to home and then it should go back and restart that layer. Just like it never happened. And a quick disclaimer about power off resume, it doesn't always work every time. But having any type of power recovery is better than not having any at all. And that is Marlin 1.1.9. Now I know I didn't go into the specifics of every feature, but there are more videos coming that will walk through some of these step by step. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.